Hey guys, welcome back to the Smith Family Ranch. Today, we just want to have a little bit of a chat. So we're obviously in a nice pandemic right now, a crisis as some people might consider it too. And the question is, is should you start a homestead or farm, hobby farm in the midst, in the middle of a pandemic or in the middle of a crisis? The short answer is absolutely. I believe now is the time to start. If you guys haven't already seen the rush to the grocery stores of everything buying out or getting bought out, this should be an alarm to everybody that more homesteaders, more farmers, more hobby farmers are needed. We should be growing our own groceries. We should be raising our own food. Then we are less dependent on the grocery store. So when a pandemic hits us again, because it's going to hit us again, it's just history has told us that it's going to hit again. We're less affected as homesteaders, farmers, or hobby farmers. And so, yes, while hands-on experience for some animals is great, how else do you get that hands-on experience than just jumping in with both feet to get that experience? Most homesteaders that are on YouTube, including us, jumped in. Most of us didn't know what we were doing. We weren't raised on farms. We weren't, we didn't take over a farm or a homestead. We all decided that we were too tired of the norm and went against it and jumped in feet first not knowing what we were doing we did yeah even though darcy has been raised on a dairy farm we still didn't know what the heck we were doing we spent 15 years in the city away from all of that and we decided that we were tired of it yeah and ready to just jump in that's pretty much what we did yeah we didn't watch YouTube videos on how to do any of this stuff and along our journey we have. Yes. We have watched YouTube videos to learn and we have uh, gained some experience and we've made some friends and along some lines of some of the um, cattle stuff that we do. We have um, mentors. Yeah, we have some mentors. That, but had we not just jumped in and done it, one, we've gained a lot of experience too, so we're able to give a little bit of advice. Um, more than we were when we first started. Uh, and so I think that it would be bad advice for any homesteader or any farmer to tell you now is not the time. Now is the time. There's no better time than the present to do any of this stuff. And so if you have the finances and the ability to, whether it be your HOA allows it or your city allows it and you're on a one or two acre lot, uh, there's homesteaders on YouTube that do homesteading on one acre lots inside the city. Um, they raise goats, they raise pigs, they have gardens on one, or, one acre or two acres or more. Um, and so I believe that just like the advice that some homesteaders have given of waiting while you are bought your homestead to sit and wait on your land as we did a video a couple months ago, I believe that now is the time for you to start. You'll be, you will make mistakes. Animals will die because of our mistakes. But if you learn from those mistakes, then it will curb that learning curve for you. And then in the future, you'll be able to share your knowledge to local people, hopefully for free, to pass that on because, as we all see on YouTube, it's free for us. So I think we have an obligation as homesteaders and farmers and ranchers and hobby farmers to pass on what we have, not at a cost, but as for free, so that we can pass it on. I think it's our duty as homesteaders to encourage other people to do it. I think the more people we have in the <clears throat> homestead community, the more we can lean on each other, 
-hmm. more we can gain from different knowledges and experiences because what happens in the north doesn't happen in the south what happens in the east doesn't happen in the west um, <clears throat> just like with homestead in the hard way where they're at many cows cattle doesn't sell very well well out here in texas they sell extremely well because of the popularity of people wanting to move out of the city um, and, and so i think that as a homesteader that we should be encouraging other homesteaders to get involved and start now not as a crisis or mm -hmm. as a prepper per se or any of that stuff just to get started now shoot just start small make yourself a little eight by eight garden with your fruits and ve fruits and vegetables get three lane hens we have three laying hens right now because some of them have, you know, been killed by predators. And we get roughly two or sometimes three eggs a day, which is sometimes not quite enough to feed us all. But there's days where we don't eat eggs, so we have a surplus. So, I mean, even three fresh eggs a day is better than none and having to worry about having to go to the store to make sure that you have enough eggs. Yeah, I think... Uh... You know, whether it's goats that some people are interested in, whether it's cows some people are interested in, or pigs even, or chickens. If you, The only way you'll be able to get any experience is not taking classes, not watching YouTube. All those things are, are helpful. The thing that's going to help you the most is just getting the animals on your land, whatever you decide to get. Learning from experience. And learning from that experience. It's yes. absolutely right. I could, t I could watch 10 YouTube videos for different channels telling me how they do something. Well, that may not even matter when they get on my property because my property is different. I have trees, they may not have trees. We have hills, they may not have hills. I mean, there's so many different things, factors, that play in to animals on your very own property. And then you learn from others too, I mean, we had posted on a Facebook group of our cow, milk cow, baby girl, and they all told us that she was her body condition score was low, and most of them said, "Get cracked corn." Mm -hmm. We started feeding cracked corn, and had it not been for Preps there Bob coming on and teaching us the proper feed, that cracked corn was not the proper feed to be feeding no. a cow. <laughs> Nope. Not in her body condition, but she needed more than just cracked corn. But it was another homesteader that, with better knowledge and more knowledge than what we have, that was able to come alongside of us and teach us what proper feed is for a dairy cow. Because out here we only have beef cows. Yep. Feeding a beef cow is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of dairies for sure. Yeah, and we don't have a lot of dairy out here. And so it took Prester Bob coming out here. Walking alongside, Walking alongside of us and sharing his knowledge us. for free. Mm -hmm. um, he came out here on his own expense, well, donations through some of YouTube uh, YouTube people and sponsors and whatnot, but for the most part, expenses that he raised. And he came out and he spent the whole week with us and shared his knowledge for free. He didn't charge us anything. And that's what we need to embody as homesteaders too, is that we need to share our knowledge whether it's a large YouTube channel, small YouTube channel, no YouTube channel, mm -hmm. that we got to share this knowledge uh, to anybody and everybody. Not to make a buck, not to um, further our own agendas, but to help other people. Um, to me, that's what makes a community. Absolutely, yes. And when the home steady community is strong, I believe America is really strong. I mean, because when this economy crashes, it's us homesteaders that are going to be the most prepared. Absolutely. Because we know how to garden. We can raise our own food. We can slaughter cows and pigs and goats and can. milk and can and Freeze. all the stuff that is at a grocery store. And so the more people we have involved, so I would definitely 1,000% encourage you that if you've been de debating whether in the middle of this crisis to start something or not, to put animals on your farm or your land, your little acre lot, half acre lot, if you can put them on there and your HOA, your city allows it, do it. Go for it. 
Start with whatever your budget allows. Um, chickens are the easiest to get going. They're yeah. what everybody considers the gateway into all other animals. It's true, yeah. <laughs> um, and then from there, I've heard, I, I, we don't raise goats, so I can't share too much goat knowledge, but from what I've heard from other YouTubers like Homesteady, um, is that goats are probably one of the second easiest animals to raise. Um, cows are a little bit more complex because they're one bigger. They need more room. They need more room. Mm -hmm. They do take a little bit more feed or a lot more feed. They take a lot more knowledge of knowing. But at the end of the day, when we first got into cows, meat cows, we had no idea what we were doing. No, we didn't. We didn't ever. We didn't know anything about meat cows. No. Mm -mm. And but we just jumped in. And we've learned a lot. We've made some mistakes, of mm -hmm. course. Luckily, nothing's cost the cow's life so far. Yeah. Knock on wood, it doesn't. But um, the real knowledge you're going to learn, yeah, you can watch YouTube videos all day long. It's, you know, I've always been told paralysis by analysis is, is essentially where you get paralyzed trying to analyze so much. Yeah. That you analyze too much that you don't do anything. Instead, do something and then analyze is essentially what the saying is supposed to say. I would say jump in. If you're deciding anything, feel free and either reach out to us. We'll be glad to help in any way we can. Mm -hmm. um, we're limited on some animals because we don't raise them. We don't care to raise certain animals on our farm or ranch out here. So, uh, But we can help you direct you to people that do um, and... and people that will share the resource. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been on farm tours or on farms that have caught, charged us. And ultimately the business and the farm that we decided to go with was the one that shared all their knowledge free and clear. Yeah. My dad always tells me that you can always tell a confident business person when they're willing to share all their secrets and knowledge for free because they're that confident in their business that you can't steal their business no matter how much more knowledge you gain. And I think that rings true. I mean, when we went and got Hazel AI'd, which we can show that uh, video here as well. Oh, yeah. Um, the AI tech, one, Darcy had mentioned that she was thinking about getting AI tech certified, and he encouraged her. He didn't discourage. And then he showed us everything. His entire operation mm -hmm. didn't hold anything back. Yeah. And... It just shows you how confident he is in his business mm -hmm. that he's willing to share it yeah. for free. And he wasn't arrogant about it either. He was no. just like, oh, yeah, here. Yeah, he was very open. Um, and those are the kind of people that you want to be around when you do start your journey is find those kind of people that will come along you, come alongside with you and um, teach you, whether it be someone like Prepster Bob, like our AI tech guy. Um, Mr. Ross with the cattle. Yep, Ross. Um, and Shane mm -hmm. uh, Harriman um, that help us with our meat cows. Um, Shane probably gets tired of me <laughs> all the time because I'm always texting him different ideas that I see or and run things by him. But he's a friend now and a, a good mentor, and so is Ross. That they teach me things mm -hmm. um, and they don't charge for anything. Mm -mm. Um, and so, absolutely. Positively, if you're on the fence, I hope this video convinces you to absolutely start now. Get on Craigslist, whatever animal you've been thinking about raising on your farm or your little lot, whatever you have, get on Craigslist and start looking and buy whatever your budget allows you to buy. And your property. Yeah. 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 You don't want to buy a cow if you have a half acre lot, you know, or even an acre lot. Right. Just make sure that you have an adequate space. For that animal, of course. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure if you've already been thinking about it, you're probably already been researching what it takes to raise that certain amount of animal or mm -hmm. crop even. Um, just do it. Um, there's Again, there's no better time than the present to get going now, mm -hmm. get started now, and then watch what grows from there. And maybe you'll be like the Holler Homestead where they just did... They sh showed a video on their journey and how they were running out of room in their California lot. And it caused them to uplift their family and move across the country on the other side of the coast to North Carolina mm -hmm. and bought how many acre acres that they bought. And 
here they are, raising pigs. Yep. Um, and so I hope you guys find this um, video very valuable um, because obviously with us being in this crisis, not just in America, but worldwide, we're seeing the effects of what panic does to people as a whole. And this isn't meant to be as a panic video, more of an encouragement video to go ahead and start now, start early, mm -hmm. and jump in. Um, reach out to anybody that is willing to teach you whatever you're wanting to learn and make sure it's free because all the knowledge is already out there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whether it be YouTube or other people that might be on YouTube or not be on YouTube, the knowledge is out there. Like there's A mentor. Yeah, there's nothing that's not out there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, all the knowledge is pretty much out there. It's been going on for generations. Oh, yeah. That um, raising cows. Yeah, you might get 10 different opinions on doing those cows, mm -hmm. but... And not all t they're not wrong. They're just different sure. ways yeah. of doing it. That was the f most frustrating thing we had when we first started is we'd go to different feed <clears> stores <throat> and everybody would have a different answer to certain things um, and whatnot. And so that's why we just leaned on for our cows, um, the farms that we reach out to, which is Shane and Ross, yeah. and really get them... Uh, their knowledge because of how long they've been raising this specific beef in our region too. Um, they reach, they're in Texas, they know what to raise, they know what works and doesn't work for our specific cows. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? No, I think, you, I think we covered it. Well, I <laughs> hope again that this video finds some value to you as an encouragement, not, not a panic, not you must do it now. We're not those kind of people. We're not a panic person, people. We would like to see everybody getting involved. There's um, plenty of space needed for more YouTubers on YouTube for homesteaders. There's not, we're not maxed out. <laughs> just because somebody has a couple hundred thousand YouTube subscribers just doesn't mean that you can't get there either um, right. so best of luck let us know if you have any questions if you disagree leave them down in the comments below and uh, we can have a good discussion about it and we respect everybody's opinions on what they have to say so if you have any disagreement or any agreement or would like to share anything please let us know in the comments below absolutely that's it all right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you later.